welcome to Perth Watch, your horology channel broadcasting from right here in Perth, Western Australia. Today I am reviewing Pagani copy design. However, it's not one but two pieces. You guys know the drill. Uh, it comes in this particular box. So let's flip it around and take a closer look at what we have today. All right, guys, so here we have the box on the table, typically uh, black cardboard, pagany design, uh, probably a three out of five today. Actually, it's not spinning particularly well on this table. Microfiber cloth, you've seen these before. Uh, manual, which is multi-function. Uh, and in fact, let's have a look whether it does copy um, as in container chronograph, I think it does, but anyway, I'm not going to go into it. It's got a bit of instruction, empty warranty card, fill it out yourself, call the number, check if it actually works. Um, probably doesn't, you know, uh, but you can pretend it does. Uh, there is uh, space here for, you know, the tag, you know, a little bit of tag to let you feel that you might be getting a little bit of quality. Uh, and then, of course, the four extra links that I've taken off inside. Okay, so put it aside and let's just undo the clasps here. It's a pretty nice clasp and show you the watch in closer detail here. So guys, this is, of course, the Pagani Design uh, Rolex Daytona homage. It is absolutely an homage, not original design in any way. So, you know, that's, that's straight away you will notice. Uh, the uh, model number of this one stipulated is PD1644. Uh, now, I do have also a PD1687. Uh, and I don't know whether there's supposed to be a, an update on this. Uh, there are models that look like this that are stipulated as 1687. I suspect that's exactly the same thing, but they may be renamed it because this is obviously an update and, you know, a looser homage, if you will. This is actually quite a different design. I'm going to focus more on uh, this more pure homage. Uh, and kind of highlight the differences later. Now the, the pricing varies a little bit on this. Uh, I think the list usually is around $99 or $100, but it does tend to go cheaper. Uh, down to $70 is fairly typical and that's pretty darn fantastic good value. All right, so let's just talk about the movement here and I'm gonna start the chronograph uh, so that we can, I guess, reset it after the amount of time. Okay, and you can see the central seconds uh, hand moving right now. So what here, what we have in here is the Seiko VK63. This is what uh, the movement in here is, and that's a pretty good movement for a you know quartz analog chronograph. It's a mecha quartz. It's got a flyback kind of style chronograph hand, or it actually flicks back uh, immediately, and I'll show you that when I reset it. It's got a one fifth of a second. You know intervals so you can see the second hand clicking away there one fifth of a second readout there central seconds chronograph hand uh, and it's got a 60 minute totalizer at nine o'clock okay that's what you're seeing there the 24 hour sub dial is uh, indicated at three o'clock and of course uh, the running seconds you can see is in the six o'clock position okay so that's the movement here if i stop it now and reset it just watch the hands right straight back all right let's just keep that running now okay so the case um uh, moving on here i'm just going to list uh, the dimensions here for you to see okay like thickness luck to luck distance and all that uh, overall weight uh, on the bracelet adjusted bracelet here is 128 grams now what is the difference uh, with this now the case is actually quite different this one has a rounded side here and the dimensions I'll put at the bottom here. Okay, so slightly different profile and actually slightly th thicker. And most of that thickness difference is actually because the case back is a little bit more substantial, you know. So you can see the case back on the silver one or the bracelet one is not quite as uh, substantial as, as sticking out as the one on the rubber strap here. Okay, and then the profile of the side is really quite different. Right, this one actually is a lot rounder. Hopefully you can appreciate that it is actually a lot uh, rounder on profile. So it's actually a different case. It's not just the same case with a different dial here. Okay, finishing. Right, it's got uh, a polished bezel. Is it PVD? I, I assume it must be because they don't say it's ceramic. You would say it's ceramic if it is and they haven't. Uh, I'm, I haven't been able to confirm that, but let me know if you know better. I'm assuming it's black PVD 
uh, steel. Uh, it's got a polish top, polished sides, and it goes onto a circular brushing on the bottom there. Uh, it's got a screw down solid case back, right? That you see, you know, the details there on that solid uh, case back. Uh, and with the screw down main crown as well as screw down pushes, these are actually functional screw pushes. Uh, the water rating they've gone for is 100 meters. Uh, now, the case back on this one, I'll sort of quickly show you, is really leaning into the homage here. So, homage of perhaps a Zonda. Let me know if you recognize that sports car. Definitely a sports car silhouette homage on this particular case back, you know, which is the first I've seen actually from uh, Pagani Design, Guru Pagani Design. All right, moving on to the dial now. So, <clears throat> first off, this main one. This is uh, a gloss white dial, printed details and chapter ring and applied indices around the dial here uh, with Zuraj. Looks like it's applied, Zuraj uh, sub-dial rings, which is pretty cool. It's got polished baton style hands with an arrow chronograph seconds. Uh, the sub-dial hands are also all simple polished batons. Okay, so that's this particular uh, dial on the white Daytona homage here. Now this one, this one's completely different, right? I mean, this one is a blue sunburst gradation. So it goes, starts from blue at the top and then goes down to nearly black at the bottom. It's got a sunburst effect on it. Printed details in chapter ring as per the other one and applied indices, but in this case is numeral indices. Uh, the Izuraj subdials, right? The entire subdial here, the silver ones in the 369 position are full Izuraj. Polished baton main hands, it's got polished red colored subdial hands, a nice uh, color variation here, and an arrow chronograph seconds, okay? Uh, loom uh, on these watches are on the two. Uh, main hands only along with the indices, which means that you can't really read the chronograph in the dark. I'll put a loom shot here, of course, to let you guys appreciate how it looks like. Okay, so surrounding uh, the dial, of course, uh, is the famous uh, tachymeter bezel. That's really what it is. Okay, it doesn't turn. You know, you don't get a tachymeter that turns. Never seen one anyway. Uh, full sapphire crystal, uh, which is flat. You know, not, not domed. It does have a bevel edge here, and both these models have a bevel edge on the sapphire crystal at the top here. Right, moving on to the bracelet then. So three piece per link uh, style, you know, I, I dare say oyster homage. Uh, polish center uh, with brush sides, and it's got solid end links. And amazingly, Pagani does give you screw adjustment. So you can see there it's screw link adjustment. It does taper classically from 20 to 16 millimeters with a very nicely done 18 millimeter wide uh, deploying clasp, right? Solid like, you know, nice deploying. And of course, it's really taken the design from the original here. And it's even got a comfort extension that, you know, functions fairly nicely. So that five millimeter comfort extension actually works unlike some of the earlier models that I got from them. All right, wrist shot quickly. There we go. So 40 millimeter watch, 48 millimeter lug to lug distance. And you know, fairly slim, just under 12 millimeter. And that's how it looks like. Of course, this is taking a lot from the Rolex it homages. All right, so that's for this one. I'm gonna put that aside there and then just quickly cover this. This is just a silicon rubber, nothing too fancy, okay? I'm going to say nothing too fancy, just a brush steel buckle here. And of course, I'll just give you a guys a wrist shot of this thing. And there it is, guys. Okay. 17 centimeter wrist, by the way, my wrist circumference. All right. So that's that. Now let's talk about what are the pros and cons. So what have I enjoyed? about this. Look, I think it is an absolutely fantastic value. Uh, Rolex Daytona homage. It gives you 90% of the looks at less than 1% of the price. As usual, it is, uh, you know, unequal in value for the price bracket. Look, seriously, if you get this for 70 USD, uh, you're not going to find anything better. And if it, uh, you know, if you find it cheaper, it might be probably 
more dodgy. You know, particularly the bracelet that they're giving, the bracelet and the clasps, for 70 bucks. I think this is, I don't know anything that uh, kind of beats this. You know, the, the specs are good enough. You know, you're getting Sapphire Crystal, you're getting a very reliable Seiko mechanical quartz uh, chronograph movement. The loom is fair and the case is pretty darn solid. Uh, and especially that bracelet and crafts. Again, I'm, I'm raving about that, but that part probably is the best part of this entire watch. What's the weakness? Well, guys, it is quartz. And I'm saying if you don't like quartz, if you're a mechanical guy, of course, this is not something you will get. Ultimately, it is a copied homage design, which means, as usual, it's not for everyone. What can I say about this one? Well, this one, I think, clearly, it's a much more loose homage. This is a true homage design. It's not a direct one-to-one uh, -one copy of any Rolex model, uh, or well, I'm not sure whether it's one-to-one -one of anything, actually. At least they've gone their own way, right? That, that gradation dial, of course, is uh, inspired by the deep sea, but hey, look, this is something different, and I think it's refreshing if you want something different. Uh, and the rubber, well, I think the, the weakness is in the rubber. This is actually relatively average. Look, it's okay. It's reasonably comfortable, but I'd much rather get it on this bracelet. You know, that's just really not for me and probably not for everyone. Right, guys, so there we go. My thoughts on these watches. Let's flip it around now for the wrap-up. So there you go, guys, my review of these Pagani copy design Mecha Quartz chronograph watches. Of course, they are homage of the Rolex Daytona. There's no question about it. Uh, let me know what you think about these particular pieces. You know, who's going to get these types of watches? Well, I reckon if you can put up with an homage design, if you, if you, you know, don't have uh, anything against that, and you want a fantastic value uh, piece with you know very reasonable quality for the asking price, I, I think you might like this one. So you know, let me know your thoughts. Of course, always enjoy the discussions in the comments. Guys, if you enjoy my videos, do consider subscribing. New content every week, always aiming to be objective and unbiased about all things horology. Thank you again for sticking with me, and as always, I'll catch you guys again next time.